just too many TikTok references. I wish I knew what that meant. Okay, Chloe, thank you for coming. Chloe, would you take a seat there? Chloe. Sorry, we got some. We got a news for you. We got some news for you. We've got uh, we've got some guys here who are going to woo you, Chloe, based on the things we know about you. Could you bring up the board? I just I just want to remind everyone, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chloe. She's a Taurus. Her birthday is uh, May seventeenth. Was that right? Yeah. May seventeenth. Uh, so she's. Uh, Never been in a relationship. She had a boyfriend when she was five years old, uh, at which point she experienced the first kiss. Uh, this was, of course, in Christian kindergarten, where apparently this is okay. <laughs> but she has, she's undoubtedly uh, formed the opinion that all oh, boys suck. Uh, however, uh, um, don't shake your head there, Daniel. The school is cool. Uh, if she was to get, in, you know, get into a relationship for. Um, for physical purposes, she prefer, uh, he's a white man, tall with brown floppy hair, and she loves accents, and he's not that buff. Uh, but of course, if they went on a meal, uh, she doesn't need to be vegan, but uh, he can't have bad hygiene, he's just like a waiter, and too many TikTok purposes. Right. <laughs> Guys, we're going to do an original song, and this song is for you. Uh, this song is absolutely
I'm a comedian, you may not like me. <laughs> you say boys suck, but there's a lot of hot, hot, hot teas. Yes, boy! Especially Bumble Harry Potter. <laughs> I also had a relationship before. You said your first relationship in Christian kindergarten. You had your first kiss when you are five. Same with me, but mine with El Ustas. Because if it ends up on the internet That'll be the end of the joke factory Okay, here we go. Hello. Hey, Tony. Sorry about that. So you. How is this Skanda? Hey, hey, bro. So this is. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm live on uh, what's going on Malaysia with Namwi. He says he wrote a very nice song about you. Hello, hello, Namwi. Hi, Tony. So, bro. So uh, he he says you're a cheap bastard. I am. I am. <laughs> I am. I I was nothing wrong in that. I was I was defending you, you bro. Just, I said I said you are a nice yeah. guy, and you are definitely gonna, you're gonna sponsor some tickets for him to shoot a movie in Kotekina Balu. He needs to fly his crew there. 
Uh, done, done, no problem. As long as we get something for it. He is over the moon. So, Namwi, Namwi, he wants to know what the movie is about. Namwi, what is the movie about? Just make it up right now. I have no idea here because I have not even write the script. You just suddenly bring me a sponsor. Right, thank you so much, Tony. You're, at, you're a gem. You're a gentleman. I'll see you soon, brother. Take care. Bye. Bye. Done, brother. Done already. Thank you so much, Abang. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't ask him how many tickets. <laughs> <laughs>
what am I talking about it? I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. But my guest was there. Uh, my guest uh, is, is an activist, and she she was head first into the whole Tanka Zambaki movement. So I'm, we're going to hear directly from this person, and I want to know as much as everybody else, what's going on, Malaysia? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the studio, Amir Aisha. Hello. Hi, Harry. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me here today with you. It's such an honor uh, to be on the show. Uh, no, 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 please don't stop. Uh, <laughs> you are, uh, okay. Please take, please, please take a minute to uh, um, introduce yourself to the audience in Facebook, YouTube and Twitter space um, in case they may not know you or what you do. Um, just, just take a minute to introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, so my name is Amira Aisha Binti Abdul Aziz. Um, usually people call me Amira. I'm a law graduate, um, but I didn't pursue, uh, you know, continue in legal field. I decided to join the public policy think tank under KPM, under the Ministry of Education. And I recently co-founded uh, Party Muda uh, with several other young, passionate activists. Uh, and I'm currently the Secretary General of Party Muda. Okay, great. So uh, you, more than uh, most people, uh, are not just uh, concerned and, um, uh, well, let's put it this way, you are you're, you're headfirst into all the issues which are ailing Malaysia at the moment. Specifically, we're going to be talking about one issue tonight, Tangkap Azambaki. Now, uh, for those of you who are watching or listening uh, who may not know the complete story, and I know there, there, there are many out there, uh, what is, what is it all about? Yeah, so here's what here's what me as a layman will know. So a gentleman named Azambaki is the chief uh, commissioner, I believe, of the MACC Malaysian um, uh, what is it? Uh, MACC Malaysian Anti Corruption uh, Commission, and uh, he apparently he bought some shares, and he wasn't supposed to buy some shares, and then he said it wasn't he who bought the shares. He, he said his brother bought the shares, uh, and so you see from from a, from an outsider's point of view. You know, some people may be going, yes, yes, so what? What's the big deal? So please, Amira, fill us in. What is the big deal? Yeah, sure. Um, I think the story behind this whole Azam Baki thing is very funny. Uh, it's funny because of the reason as to why he gives, uh, as you know, the reason that he gave when he was confronted by the issue. Uh, but before that, a little bit of the background of the particular case. So um, recently, um, a journalist um, mendedahkan bahawa Azam Baki, who is currently the Ketua Pusurajaya of SPRM, had bought 1.9 million of unit saham uh, in global in Gets Global Bahad and another 1.02 unit of saham in the same company in two different years, which is in total, he bought about 2.9 million of shares. And then he was also found out that he have uh, he owned a uh, 2.1 million warren in another company and so, so several other people like been asking so what if he owns all this and what if he you know bought the shares right if it's by his own money what's the problem with it so basically there are two things why this is problematic there are two reasons why this is problematic number one is that um as a public servant and not just any public servant azambaki holds the highest office uh you know the highest um was positioned in SPRM, in MACC, he is supposed to declare all assets that he has. That includes warrants, that includes shares. And if he doesn't declare this asset, then he goes against the conduct and discipline of a public officer. So that is the first problem that goes in this case. The second problem is that there is a service circular for all public servants in which public servants cannot own more than 100,000 ringgit worth of shares in any company. So there are okay, two, wait, prob wait, two wait, problems wait. here. Sorry, this yeah. is something. This is new information to me. So what you're saying yeah. is that it is, it is, a, uh, it is, it is a condition, or it is part of the the job, uh, uh, pro the job um, lineup that you can't own more than a hundred thousand ringgit. Right? Yeah, hundred thousand ringgit. ringgit. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry, sorry to just veer off. What if no uh, I, I had more than a hundred thousand, and then mm. I suddenly. Uh, joined uh, MACC, I would be asked to re release that first before I join. Is that right? Or you cannot buy more than 100,000 while you are there? Yeah, you cannot own while you are holding office, 
because you know um, when you are holding office as a public servant obviously there are kind of informations that you are privy to that other people who are not public servants are not privy to for example you might have access as to you know what kind of um, shares that may go up in a certain time you may have access on things that other people do not have. So as a public servant, you cannot own more than 100,000 ringgit worth of shares simply because there's a conflict of interest. Especially when Azam Baki is, you know, he's not just like a regular uh, Krani public servant. He's, he's a Ketua Pusurajaya SPRM. And that's like the highest level of person holding the integrity of a country. So holding that much amount of shares and that much amount of warrant is clearly against the rules and conduct of a public officer, right? And... So the funny part about this whole case, so when he was confronted about it, when people started asking, where does this shares come from? How is it that he's owning this much share? Um, how is it that, um, you know, he, he, he bought this in 2015 and 2016, where at that point of time, he was also in MACC and he was also part of the body that declared Datuk Sri Najib as clear, in the one MDB case. That was around the same time, the 2015-2016 time, right? He declared that Sri Najib cleared from all the one MDB wrongs and at the same time, he bought these warrants and shares. So that got people wondering as to what, what's, what's actually happening in this case. And so the funny part was that I think when Azam Baki gave his answer, I was really unsatisfied with his answer simply because the answer macam mempubodohkan rakyat Malaysia. Because the only thing he mentioned was that, oh, I didn't buy the share. Saham tu bukan saya punya, but my brother bought the share. So the only answer that he gave to people's question was that his younger brother, which is Nasir Baki, was the one who used his account to buy the shares. Now, this is like a very macam level budak sekolah punya jawapan. In fact, I'm pretty sure if my younger sister was confronted as to why she didn't do her homework. I'm pretty sure she can come up with a better excuse than that. And <laughs> what's funny is that even if his brother is the one who bought the shares using his account, that is still against the rule of law. Why? Because according to the um, you know, Akta Perindustrian Industry, so ac according to an act, which is only a person who owns the account can use the account for the purpose of trading which means that his brother, if it's true that his brother is the one using his account, is also, you know, against the law for him to be using Azambaki's account to buy the shares because simply only Azambaki is allowed to buy any shares or any warrants using the account of his name and his brother can't do that. And so there are simply like, even with that reasoning, it's a clear cut wrong. And I think these are the reasons why people are demanding for Azam Baki's case to be investigated and to be investigated not by Azam Baki himself because that's what's happening right now. So the investigation... What? What? How, so the, sorry, repeat that? Yeah, so what's happening right now, there are two kinds of investigation done on Azam Baki's case, which is number one, it's being done uh, internally by SPRM itself and number two, it's done by Securities Commission. So... The one that is done by SPRM is, I think, the funniest part because we've been asking Azam Baki to step down. You know, he's currently the Ketua Pusuro Jaya SPRM. When there's a case opened against him, it's only logical for him to just step down for a while and allow a free, you know, without conflict of interest investigation being done. But he doesn't step down. He's still the Ketua Pusuro Jaya SPRM while orang bawahan dia in SPRM is doing the investigation. So, obviously, you, even if the investigation is being done rightly, which we don't know whether it is or it isn't, um, it's tough for people to believe that there is ketelusan dalam penyiasatan tu because he's still holding office and that just doesn't make sense. And then there's an investigation by Securities Commission. So now, this is another funny part. Securities Commission investigated Azabaki uh, not many days after, suddenly a case was opened up by SPRM against the higher officers in Securities Commission. So now, orang yang disiasat, menyiasat orang yang menyiasat. Azam Baki is being investigated by Securities Commission and then he opened a case to investigate Securities Commission. So it's like all jumbled up. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, this is... The way you put it is almost a comedy movie. It's, it's like <laughs> yeah. 
it's like a farce. It's like a, a mm. British sitcom. Uh, yeah. The investigators start investigating the investigator of the investigation. Yeah. I don't even yeah. That yeah. Sense. Okay. <laughs> Basically that. <laughs> so there's a lot of like, actually the case is so confusing for you to grasp, you know, and yeah. <laughs> Uh, kita ada banyak sebab untuk ketawa and I'm glad that you are able to 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 in, envelop this in uh, a little bit of humor but uh, on the on the other hand okay facts given facts you, you, you've just laid it yeah. out but why the hashtag tangkap azam baki because that would seem that is very focused on uh Uh, a conclusive action, as in tangkap, yeah. rather than step down Azamba, uh, Adam Azambaki or uh, what's going on Azambaki, which would be a pretty yeah. good talk show, I think. But uh, yeah. why, why yeah. tangkap Azambaki? I think simply because um, when you look at it, when you compare it to any other layman out there, right? If immediately a case is opened up against you, which is what's happening with Azambaki. When there's a report against the layman, they don't wait for for you know like a one by one investigation being done. If it's a simple, for example, teacher at an at a, a simple like you know a regular school, and someone is accusing the teacher of committing this kind of wrong, what will happen to that teacher? Immediately, what SPRM will do is SPRM will definitely tank up that cikgu, you know, put that teacher in baju orange SPRM, you know, in the orange. Uh, uh, baju and remind them, put them under remind, and then the investigation starts, right? So this is what happens when regular layman does this kind of mistake. So why the double standard here? Why if a regular layman, even if you was accused with a salah laku uh, as little as 100 ringgit, 200 ringgit, immediately they'll be caught by the, the, by the officers in charge and then they'll be definitely be sent to look up And then they'll be questioned and they'll be treated as if they are already guilty. That's just how it has always been done in Malaysia. But suddenly, when it's Ketua Pesurujaya SPRM, because he's holding a very high office, suddenly he wasn't even caught. You don't put him in any baju orin. And, you know, even the investigation was being done without us knowing whether it's the loss or not. I think this is what we are wanting. All right? Yeah. Okay. We are... Sorry, there's a lap. Sorry. So what we are demanding right now is that we want Azambaki to be treated the same way as any other people. If, you know, we don't want double standard anymore. If we want a siasatan yang telos, we want him to be taken in and investigated as if he's any regular person in Malaysia. Yeah. Okay. But... Uh... Let's uh, let's let's call a spade a spade. In Malaysia, currently, that very rarely or never happens. I think we can we can admit that. That's just become part of yeah. the culture. You know, yang kita nampak di mana you know certain individuals if they have reached a certain standard or dapat certain title yeah. will get preferential yeah. treatment, and uh, it has almost become a norm. It has become a Yeah, I use the word culture, but uh, I don't think it's become. Yeah, maybe it's become part of the culture. But so, to be honest, what's happening right now from a Malaysian who's been around for a few years is like, yeah, not surprising, if you know what I mean. Mm. It's like, mm, yeah. yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah. at the same time, at the same time, um, just going back to what you were saying earlier, did you like? Let's let's jump let's jump to Saturday where you had this um, protest. Uh, yeah. You know what's going to happen now when you have a protest in Malaysia. Uh, the boys in red and the boys in blue are going to show up. You know that's yeah. going to happen. Uh, yeah. What was your you know? I, I was not there down on the ground. Uh, what what was the let Let's be honest. What was the intention of the protest? I think. One thing is that I've always believed that the people exist as well as a check and balance to whatever's happening right now in the government. Despite it, like what you've pointed out, you've pointed out it rightly, that whatever's happening right now, it has been such a norm in Malaysia that 
there are people who, when we expressed our intention to go down, they started saying, oh, tak guna pun, or things won't change, or nothing will happen, or you'll just waste your time and all that. But I believe that once people stop pressuring the government, once people stop speaking up against what is wrong, and that's where the country fails. As of right now, I think the system is failing, the system is wrong, but our country hasn't failed yet. That the spirit of the country is with the people and that is us. And all of us have the duty to speak up against whatever is wrong. And we don't, not, not only a duty, we actually also have the right within the federal constitution for us to you know, go down on the ground and demand for the government to make things right. And although the journey might be long, although the journey that you know, this Azambaki might not be captured in another two, three days or, or you know, maybe another year, but if we stop speaking up, if we stop pressuring the government about these things, then that is when we know that we will never see change. So I believe that while we are still speaking up, while there are still people like, you know, all the people, the protesters who went down the other day, despite knowing the risks that exist when they go down on the street, I think while we exist, there's still hope for Malaysia to right things that are wrong. That is what I firmly believe in. I, I like what you just said. There is still hope for Malaysia to right the things that are wrong. I would just like to take a moment to a shout out to Twitter Space. If there's anybody in Twitter Space who would like to jump in on the conversation, please let us know. Uh, well, let me know. I'm holding the phone right now um, that you want to join in the conversation. And we will bring you in and, and, you know, if you can talk. If you were there on the day, how do I know? I'm going to check with my team here. How do I know if somebody wants to join the conversation? They, they, they'll, they'll, there's a request button that comes up. Guys, request button. Okay. So you let me know if somebody wants to join in the conversation. Okay. So here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. So you, since Saturday, uh, I believe you've, uh, the police have called you in. Um, yeah. Just out of, um, how were you treated? Was everything okay? Was, uh, you know, was there any, just yeah. from, from your point of view, what was the, yeah. What were they? What were they specifically looking at? What were they asking about? I mean, what were they just doing their job, or what's the story? Yeah. So. Yeah. So I think. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't blame uh, the police officers. You know, the police officers. They're they're, they're civil servants, uh, public servants. They are bound by the duty that was uh, given to them, and they, if they were told to investigate a case, then they will do it, uh, which is their duty. And I've been called um, for tangkap azam case itself i've been called twice uh to the police uh you know to the to the ipd brickfields uh, for two cases but i settled it in one day and not just me several other activists as well and you know this is the part where it's so funny that this is not just on me or those who were speaking up on that day right now what i heard is they are calling they're calling up one by one all the protesters that were there and um, when I was at the IPD Brickfields, I was informed that they are looking for another 52 protesters who were there during the protest. And the line of questioning would be about uh, what is the intention of going to the protest? Uh, do you know whether the protest received the permit or not? Uh, what is the objective of the protest? And I think, you know, all these things are hugely unnecessary simply because, number one, you're wasting the time of our public servants, the police officers, by investigating people who weren't supposed to be investigated. What we were asking for you is to investigate Azambaki. But now, you are rallying all of us one by one. I heard that by this Friday, another 35 people will go to IPD Brickfields. But this is the question. When will Azambaki be investigated? You've investigated me, fair. You've investigated several of my other friends. You are going to investigate more of the people who went to the protest. My question is, when will the investigation to Azambaki be open? Because that's what we are demanding. And until you do that, we will not stop doing what we are doing. And you can continuously open more and more investigation on us. It won't make any difference to us because we will still do what we think is right. Until you do what is right and until you correct this wrong, we will not, dis you know, we will not stop doing this. And just to take this opportunity, I understand for those who go down to the protest, 
thank you so much for joining the movement. And I understand that most of them going are very young and they have never experienced being called to the police, uh, you know, to Balai Police to be investigated. Please don't be scared. You know, um, the organizers have uh, Okay, I think we are uh, just losing. Uh, is your right. Sorry, sorry can uh, you? Am I? Yeah, am I back? Yeah, you're, you're back. You are yeah. back, girlfriend. You are back. <laughs> we, lost you, we lost you just for okay. a moment right there. So, uh, did, yeah, yeah. We were talking. A question popped across my mind. So, there should be protest. Ni boleh ke tak boleh? Because I know one time, especially when, you know when I was growing up, even as far as back, not so far back as eight or nine years ago, protest tidak dibenarkan because you couldn't gather more than four people in one place. Tapi as it stands at the moment, boleh ke tak boleh? I mean, I'm hearing conflicting reports legally. Yeah, yeah. So um, legally, actually, I, I am of the opinion because you know it, right now it's it's a case of law kind of case, and there is a case of law that mentioned that we can do perimpunan aman, we can do any gathering without permit. So if you ask me, what we did the other day was it was obviously legal in the eyes of law and it's also our right in federal constitution to berhimpun. But the biggest question that I, ha I have again to the government is why the double standard? And this is a trend that we see uh, in the government of the day, right? When we want to you know, have this gathering, and we even, you know, practice all the SOP that were needed. You called everyone in one by one. But when the government holds such big gatherings, suddenly it's okay. Suddenly the gathering, you know, does not break the law. Suddenly it's okay that tiba-tiba gathering by government tak kena COVID. But gathering by orang awam akan kena COVID. Like, where, it doesn't make sense, right? Even if you say that. Is because of only because of SOP. Like, look at the gathering of Kuala Malaysia, uh, um, and there's a marathon uh, recently that was organized by the government as well. All these things, they even have more people than the people that we have at LRT Bangsa on that day. But no investigation was opened, or you know, I mean, is there investigation that was opened? It was only opened after that was pressured by the people, and so you can clearly see that the problem right now is not merely about whether what we were doing is legal, which, which, we, which is legal. But the problem right now is the huge double standard that has been practiced by the government. I think that part has to be really, you know, the people really have to speak up about that. Because right now we know that when the people start speaking up, the government will feel pressured to do what's right. Okay. I mean, kudos to you. You're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, and, I, and I also agree that... Uh, the people should not stop trying to correct what what we believe is incorrect. Let me ask yeah. you this. Okay. Uh, let's say, lah, Tangkap Azambaki, you get the result that you uh, are, are looking for and Azambaki needs to step down and the Tangkap. In your humble opinion, will anything change? I think... Number one, it's a step to the change that we want. Um, obviously, trying to fix a system that is breaking up or that has been broken for so many years is no easy fit. But I believe that what we can achieve in the next few years, you know, we can achieve a lot more than what has been achieved in the last 50 years. Simply because with the existence of social media, you know, the people are much more aware of what's going on. The people have more opportunities to speak up against what they think is wrong. Even if they can't go down on the street, they can always tweet about it. They can post on Instagram about it. They can post on their Facebook about it. And this will create a, so a sense of responsibility and accountability to whoever's going in power, to any politicians out there. They know now that the people are watching that the people will hold them accountable if they do more wrong in the future. Like, for example, what's happening back then, it's tough for you to see the check and balance by the people. Uh, uh, protests in Malaysia have been alive for so long, but it has always been only... So the people in, for example, Johor or Kedah, 
or you know the the Sabah Sarawak people they are not really aware of what's going on in Klang Valley simply because all these things are being blocked by mainstream media but what's going on right now are uh, things like this are no longer blocked by mainstream media in fact people are more on social media than mainstream media these days so mm -hmm. politicians know that these days people are more aware of what they're doing and so they are held more accountable so i believe that we can create change by continuing pressuring the people in power so that they know that now a little bit of mistake that you made the people will hold you accountable and that will ensure that we can change the system that is a very powerful uh, vision that you have laid out there that uh, if you make or if someone in, in a position of power no matter what size of mistake even if it, if it is a small mistake that you it, there will be a spotlight shone upon it especially by social media very well put from yeah. a personal point of view yeah. okay uh, from a personal point of view uh, i've been around long enough uh, to 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 see all the, the five previous birthdays I think there were five, uh, and, and all these protests. And granted, I do see the the strength now in the numbers of what I would call the youth. Uh, not youth in the sense of uh, people who are 45 and still part of a youth party, but the youth in terms of um, the people like yourself. I'm not going to ask you how old you are, because you never ask You know um, how old you are. It's not important. But do you really? <laughs> I'm 26, by the way. I'm okay with that. Oh, my gosh. 26, I was sitting <laughs> around not even knowing what I was going to do in life. You are way ahead of me, young lady. But um, I, 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 I've got a feeling there is a, there's a swell. There's a upper, there's a, there's a, I wouldn't say there's a, uh, I wouldn't say it's a volcano erupting, but there's a definite swell of uh, meeting people like yourself and a lot of other people that I've spoken to of inverted commas I don't, I don't like to use the word youth because it makes it sound young. I'm not talking about young. I'm talking about people who have, have an interest in seeing change happen, especially people like yourself around the ages of 26. For yourself, from a personal point of view, when did this all begin? Like, why did When, when did you start taking an interest in, you know what, I need to make, try and make a change? Um, so this is obviously, again, very personal to myself and myself only. Uh, I... Actually, I mean, I grew up in a squatted area uh, in Johor. And when I was growing up, I've always seen that there's a social economic injustice going on in Malaysia. And I know that I wanted to be a part of the change, but I never really know like whether or not I want to join politics and all that. But when I start going um, into workspace, I realized that there is a need for you to have political will to make changes. But again, I don't think that I should be part of the political party because, you know, I don't see that there is... I, th I feel that political politics has always been dirty. That has always been the way of how I see politics. Uh, I was guilty of being on that particular high horse that I believe that is dirty and so everyone who is joining it also is dirty. Uh, I'm guilty of that. Um, but after Lanka Sheraton happened, and I think Lanka Sheraton was what I would always describe as the crumbling point of democracy in Malaysia. And when Lanka Sheraton happened, I can really see and I can really believe that when you don't have good people in the parliament, when the parliament is not filled by people who are earnest working for the people, right? Then it's going to be very tough for you to make changes. Regardless of how many experts you have in education, how many experts you have in healthcare, who can help draft a very good public policy, but if there's not enough political will to push it forward, then it can never break and make that change. And for me, when I look at Lanka Sheraton, that's when I realized that you need to be in politics to make that changes, or, or at least... Uh, the good people, you know, have to be in politics to make that changes and you can't just hoping for change to happen without being a part of that change, regardless of however you want to look at things. And I think for me personally, I've always been involved actively in activism, but to be at the forefront was caused by 
Lanka Sheraton because I believe that to me that was the crumbling point of democracy and that was really I feel that if we don't start going on the ground and making actual change then for me I don't want to see Lanka Sheraton as the future of Malaysia personally okay I just want to bring up a, a statement here from uh, Furum Sebastiana. Funny part is, the government closed down nearly 58 streets on the day itself just to protect the person being suspiciously, in, suspiciously involved in the corruption, not to mention who will be exposed should Azambaki be, be arrested. So, yeah, that is, that is a, a, a proposition or that is a suggestion that... Uh, because even I was wondering why the big hoo ha about this one person. I'm I'm not, I'm talking purely from a layman's point of view. It seemed a little bit excessive, in the view of uh, protecting one particular person. Uh, do you have any ideas, concepts, suggestions about why one person is being protected? Ah oh, wow. Because I have to be very careful in wording this. Um, <laughs> I think. So, so we just we're just talking you and me. There's nobody. Else. <laughs> I think. <laughs> now, um, hypothetically speaking. Yeah. Now, if, um, hypothetically, SPRM being the body that controls the integrity of our country is the body that oversees any wrongdoings or any corruption that is going on in the country. Uh, if there's a corruption by any public officials, those who have the file are obviously the people in SPRM. And obviously, you know, the topmost office holder, office bearer, which is Azambaki, will also have access to all those files. Now, hypothetically, if a country is filled with corruption, right, and one by one, those corruption cases are being let off and let go, you start wondering why that happened. You start wondering what happens to the body that helped regulate and help, you know, punish those who were corrupt. Why is it that, for example, cases like Kunan, cases like Musa Aman, all these cases, all these top, you know, high-profile people were suddenly DNAA. Right, dismissed, not amounting to acquittal, and to some, even dismissed and acquitted. So you start wondering what happened to these cases, and what happened to the body that was supposed to investigate these cases, and that person is Azambaki. So that person you are looking at. So if you're asking me whether why is so much hoo ha in protecting Azambaki, again I would like to ask the government. If there's nothing wrong being done by the government, why the excessive, you know, why mobilizing 1,000 police officers to the rally? Why this excessive need to protect one man? If he, is, if he really hasn't done anything wrong, then allow actual investigation being done. If you have done nothing wrong, then buka satu badan bebas, siasat azambaki, and said everything that is going on in SPRM. This is what we are demanding from the government of the day. Stop wasting resources that were paid by the people. You know, these police officers, they were paid by the people's tax money, right? It was paid by me, by you, by our family. Stop wasting these resources to protect one man. Instead, focus, right? Focus on investigating what's wrong, and focus on writing these things. Like, let's just look at our corruption index, right? Um, in, 20, uh, in 2018, you know, we, we were reported that we were at 61, the corruption index. And then when, when PH came into power, uh, it was at 51. And then after uh, Lanka Sharitan, it was 57. And then last year's corruption index that was just released two, three days ago, it skyrocketed. To our highest yet at 62. Now this begs the question with this corruption index, this begs the question what's going on with MACC? What is MACC doing? What is Azambaki doing? And so this investigation has to be done. So I think 
the question of why the excessive need to protect Azambaki is to be asked to the government, is to be asked to the Prime Minister, why the excessive need? Okay, fair enough. I'm going to bring somebody in uh, on Twitter space. And she, Borhan, if you could unmute yourself. Borhan, are you there? Are you listening in? I can see that you would like to say something. Okay, Borhan. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Can yes, I can hear you. Uh, Amira, can you hear Borhan? Um, a bit vague, but I can, I can hear, I think. Okay, Borhan, what have you got to say? Actually, I, I, I was prompted that I got an invitation to speak and I just clicked yes. I thought I was invited. <laughs> I, I am inviting <laughs> Do you have any opinion on this uh, this uh, current event, uh, Borhan? Oh, uh, regarding Tangkap Azambaki, I guess uh, to not take too much time to speak, I guess uh, piggybacking on what uh, Miss Amira said, it's that as someone who doesn't really like um, you know, I'm not too involved in politics, but I, I take it seriously when there's something, you know, involving corruption, and especially involving MACC. Um, one thing that people have to understand about this issue is that it's not about just one man, because at this point, the the the, the Tangkap Azam Baki movement isn't isn't directly and straightforwardly asking for him to be arrested straight away. People are demanding for. Uh, an investigation. People want an investigation done because uh, there seems to be some kind of wrongdoing that's happening here. And what we want is just for an, uh, an investigation to happen. And right now, the, what makes this very, very troubling uh, to, to, to everyone involved, and I think every Malaysian should feel troubled, is that uh, so many institutions are, are tripping over each other trying to protect this man. And so, of course, we are not. We don't want to, to point fingers. We don't. We don't have the evidence yet. Yeah. So, so following the rule of law, we cannot simply accuse people. But what's happening right now is raising eyebrows. Like we're just demanding that he's investigated. We're not saying, you know, people are not saying arrest this man immediately. He needs to do this and that. Investigate this man. So now there are there are there's hints of something wrong happening here. People are demanding. Uh, you know, get him away from MACC. Let them do an independent investigation on this, what's happening, because when when more than one institution, if it gets compromised, right? So this shows that in Malaysia, there's a problem uh, at the root of it. It's not just a problem of one man doing one wrong thing. It's like, oh, there are institutions that are, that are collaborating together, possibly to defend and to hide wrongdoing. Okay. And I think that's why the Angka Azam Baki movement has, has caught the attention of, of a lot of youth, including myself. Who, like, I'm not politically affiliated with any parties, but when I when I read up about the case, it also raised eyebrows. It's like, huh? Why, why are people rushing to defend this man? Like, nobody's saying that, oh, okay, he's definitely wrong. He should be arrested. The question a lot of us is that this man. Yeah. What's going on here? Because... If, if something wrong is happening and people are just covering it up, the problem with corruption is that for, for a lot of regular Malaysians like you and me who are just working in our day-to-day -day life, we might not feel the direct effects of corruption. But that's the thing about corruption. It affects things indirectly. It slowly ruins how society can work. So for me, like, I, I believe uh, it should be important that for our friends and our family, if they find out about Tangkat Azambaki, we should explain it to them, like, what's happening. It's not just, it's not a political thing, frankly. I, I don't know what other people think, but I sincerely believe, I don't think this is a political thing. It's beyond that. It involves politics, but it's beyond that. It's also about the, the, the honour and the respect that we should uphold for our institutions. Yeah. That's my big on it. Borhan, not bad for someone who started out by saying, I don't want to say too much. <laughs> No, thank you so much for for joining in on the conversation, and uh, uh, I, I my brain cannot hold everything that you just said, but it sounded very very intelligent and very very logical. Thanks, Bohan. <laughs> All right, right, thank you, Mister. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, Amira, uh, we we uh, we. Would you like to add? I mean, he was basically echoing what you said. Anything you just want to add to Borhan before we bring in uh, Avinash Kumar, a, a viewer on Facebook? 
No, I think I think Borhan said it very well, and I and I believe that that's the unique part about Tangka Azambaki is that regardless of people from whichever faction of the political belief, or even those who are not affiliated in any political party, they are interested in this case, and this shows the maturity that our youth have these days, and the maturity in our our people to you know really look at what's going on in Malaysia. And I think that's you know that's the beauty of Malaysia these days. Okay, uh, before I bring in Alia Johan, if you're on Twitter, Alia Johan, please hold on for a second. I want to bring in uh, Avinash Kumar, who is on Facebook. I think we also have Avinash on camera. Uh, Avinash, are you there? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, so uh, Avinash, uh, would you like to come on camera or do you just oh, yeah. want to speak? I, 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 I can come on camera, yeah, no problem. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, All right, hi, Avinash. Yes, hi, sir. Hi, hi Miss. I've been a very big Hello. fan of following. Hello. I've been following all your Instagram <laughs> updates. Despite oh, thank you. <laughs> beliefs, you know, like some people tell me the youths are so protesting and wasting time. I said, no, it's not It's not that way. They want to change in this country. It okay, so yeah. a lot of those what have you places. got to say about this issue? My, my uh, say in this issue is that they, the top official of MACC that is supposed to help to solve corruption, he himself is corrupted. How are we going to face ourselves in the other parts of the world? Like, that's my that's my question. Is like, I know this Azambaki protest is one way. Is there is there going to be any other protest after this to save Malaysia from corruption? Um. Okay, uh, just let me let me just add on. I'm not going to say I'm going to correct you, but uh, uh, we we can't exactly say that Azambaki is corrupted because there has been no trial as yet. But we understand your sentiment. So your question would be: Do you think? Let me ask you: Do you think there will be more protests, uh, Avinash, in your humble opinion? Yeah, I I think so. It it yeah. might happen again. Oh, I'm pretty sure it will. With people like Amira at the forefront. Yes, <laughs> because, because my, my, con my concern is that, you know, if we common people do a little bit of corruption, for example, even in our public listed company, because I'm technically ha having a public listed company. So every time I have to report certain things to certain quarters, even like sometimes I get pressured as well to keep my mouth shut. But now that's not going to happen anymore because I'm part of Kamda. So... You know, sometimes in public listed company, there are so many things going on. So as a youth, I will want to voice out as well. Because I can't stand the wrong anymore. Well yeah. done, Avinash. And that's Thank why I you salute so the formation of MUDA. And I hope it will take Malaysia forward. That's why I'm a bit Thank you. on this place. Thank you, Avinash. Thank you, Thank Thank you, so, you so much, much Avinash. We, Thank we you so much. Uh, Amira, I, be, I bet you hear a lot of people... Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Okay, I bet you hear a lot of people speaking okay. uh, Avinash's voice. Um, uh, if I correct me if I'm wrong, what I heard her say was, uh, you know, she's ready to make a stand for for what is right. Um, and and yeah. I, I can say I like that. I like that. Uh, yeah. I'm not talking about political party here at the moment. We do know that you are. Um, associated with Muda, but uh, I'm just talking about what's right. I think people should stand up for yeah. what's right. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I think, again, like, you know, the question that Avinash asked, as long as people like you and me, Avinash, as long as we want change, we'll never stop pushing for it, whether or not there'll be more protests. I would say that if the government doesn't do what is right, if the government doesn't fix this uh, and really do investigation properly on Azambaki, then there'll be also no reason for us to stop going on the street and demanding for what is right. And I'm really inspired by you know people like Avinash as well. For example, for myself, I'm in a political party, and so uh, you know um, there's sort of you know strength uh, in the togetherness of the people within my party. Uh, but for those who are not in any political party or in, not in any CSO, but, you know, usually regular Malaysian who goes down on that street that day, I think that's what made us stronger um, in trying to do this because we believe that there are people who are, you know, even willing to go there by themselves, 
regardless of knowing what's uh, what's the uh, you know the probable risk and going sometimes without knowing whether there'll be any protection from anyone at all i've met so many people who at that particular protest was their first ever protest and they came alone and i think that for me is much more inspiring and really you know inspired us to do much more and to push for this thing much harder fair enough we have andre rutens on uh, twitter space andre are you there uh, Andre, uh, you're in the room. You're uh, allowed to speak. Andre, would you like to uh, add your voice to the conversation? Okay. Andre, not there. Andre, we're gonna we're gonna hold you on if you are there. No, not there. No, Andre's not there. Okay, Andre, I'm just gonna leave you here just in case you want to come back to the conversation. Okay. Listen, uh, Amira, I know currently you're in Joho. Uh, Thank you for taking the time. Before we go, uh, let me just ask you a little bit about the future because I tend to like to uh, end conversations on uh, hopefully potentially a brighter, a brighter note. Sometimes the conversations can get very dark. Uh, what's next? Do you see? Is there is there hope for for Malaysia specifically uh, in terms of the topic that we are talking about right now, uh, focusing on one person and a very high level person at that uh, with potential corruption? Yeah. Is there is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, I mean, I always believe, uh, like I mentioned just now as well, that the true strength of Malaysia is not in any political party. The true strength of Malaysia does not lie in our system only, but the true strength of Malaysia lies in its people, you know, uh, in those who go down on the street on that particular day. Uh, it lies on, you know, the civil society uh, organizations who are willing to keep on pushing for what is right. It lies on the people who are watching, who, who you know, regardless of knowing the risk, are still command, you know, giving their comments on this issue. And I think while we are still here, while this spirit is still around, there will always be hope for Malaysia. And I believe that we will be able to see a brighter and a better Malaysia in much short yet that change together, not just by a single political party, but together as Malaysians. Very well said, Amira. And on that note, I would like to say thank you very much for being with us over this last hour and for shedding some light and a little bit of knowledge and information on what is potentially, a, I think, a ground breaking moment in Malaysian history, but uh, the history books may prove me correct or wrong. So thank you again, Amira, for your yeah. time. Uh, before you go, last words, thank anything you so we have not covered, anything you want to bring up? I just want to say thank you, Harith, and to everyone watching, and keep on fighting for what is right. Thank you so much for having me here. Okay. Thank you, Amira, uh, and um, be safe, stay safe, and stay healthy. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, uh, I'm going to bring in Akmal Yusuf, tail end Twitter. Akmal, you can unmute yourself. Are you there? Akmal? Am I supposed to unmute them or do they, do they unmute themselves? This is the second person. Oh, Akmal, I heard you. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Akmal, how are you? Where are you at the moment? At home. <laughs> Uh, where, where, where is home, Akmal? Yeah. <laughs> you are so specific. I, I love the details you put into this. Akmal, uh, Amira's out of the studio at the moment. Is there something you'd like to add to the topic? I think we just need to do the right thing. That's all. Just do the right thing. What would the right thing be in your opinion, Akmal? I think we need to be... Uh, working on very hard to be righteous and uh, that's the most important thing from a personal point of view but uh, also looking at uh, our surrounding I, I'm sure you guys young people uh, 
able to change this and um, we, we should be able to have uh, a better uh, Malaysia in future. Oh. Uh, it's just a matter of time and um, with the people under 18 going to be voting soon, I believe uh, things will change. Uh, Akmal, can I ask how old are you? Uh, I'm 56. <laughs> Akmal, brother man, masih muda, masih muda. Okay, Akmal, thank you so much for joining in the conversation. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, Akmal. Okay, so I've got another person waiting on the line. I want to bring in as many people as we can. Hisham, we're going to be we're bringing Hisham into the room. Hisham, are you there? Hisham, kat sana? Uh, hi. Hi, Hisham. How are you? Hi, Pan. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Hisham, kat mana ni? Where are you? Uh, I'm in Sepang. Sepang. Very good, Hisham. You want to add something to the conversation? Uh, I just hope that uh, Malaysia, like I hope that we can uh, become a best nation because all of this has uh, been going on for ages. It's like, uh, how long can we act like we don't know anything that's happening in Malaysia again? So, uh, hopefully, with all the speaker, whatever you say, hopefully, uh, I just wish we are, the Malaysia future will be better. Lah. Okay, uh, Hisham, how old are you? Can I ask? Um, 37. 37? Yes. Okay, Hisham. So, what would a better Malaysia look like for you? Better Malaysia for me... Um, we will have a good currency. Corruption is out of the window. Uh, we can move forward. No racism in Malaysia. There's no more uh, Malayu, China, India, and Lai Lai in the form that I have to fill it. Uh, more open minded Malaysia. And yeah, kita, jaga kita lah, all together, one Malaysia. Well done, Hisham. Thank you so much for your message, uh, Hisham Rockney. You guys can follow him on his Twitter. Thanks, bro. You take care of yourself. Okay. Well, there you go. That was Hisham. Guys, you know what? To be honest, um, this issue of uh, Tangkap Azambaki, I think, has more uh, resonance. Maksudnya, um, um, the Kebratan, the Gravitas, is not just about this one person. Now, I do not know... Azambaki personally, I, I make no judgment upon him uh, himself, uh, but I do know that the feeling, the emotion, the apa, the, kita tengok daripada netizens, daripada orang ramai, the, 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 the taste of wanting some kind of resolution, the, the taste of wanting some kind of judgment. I, I think what most people are, not to say angry, but most confused or upset about is how come there seems to be a double standard? Now, we are living in Malaysia dan uh, kita semua tahu dalam negara kita ni kadang-kadang the, 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 the double standard is in your face. So much so that we've become desensitized, we've become normalized to it. Uh, I'm going to talk about something. Um, uh, I'm sure most of you saw the, the video of when uh, uh, Zahid Hamidi, Dr. Syed Zahid Hamidi was going to the court uh, recently, and the uh, camera followed him, Masuk Khalif, and uh, the whole netizens was talking about the incident when they masuk ke dalam lift and uh, someone that looked like a bodyguard, I don't know, uh, seemed to pull out a gentleman young, prior to that greeted uh, Zahid Hamidi, and wanted to get into lift with him, and this person was pulled away. Uh, now, uh, ramai orang mara, ramai orang uh, tanya apa, you know, what is the, the reason for that, the reason for the roughness. Now, my here's my take on it. Um, I have been in a position where uh, I was being walked around by certain people, uh, security people, for, for whatever reason. And, and I have also noticed that uh, very recently I, I was in a movie premiere and uh, we were going from one place to another and we, we got to the lift and the security that was employed that day to look after me... Um, kind of uh, asked the person that was already standing there to step back and wanted to bring me and my party in. And, and I, uh, for me, I, I, I told the guy, no, tak apa. 
it's okay. We, you know, we can wait. These people were here first. So I don't entirely blame um, the person uh, or Zahid Hamidi because, you know, he's on his way to court. He's, he's rushing. He's, uh, he, and of course, he has many, many more people following him around. But at the same time, benda macam ni dah become normalized. We, 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 we are pushed to the side of the road by... by um, we are pushed to the side of the road by by police cars or, or not to say I, I understand why you know some people have to get to where they're going for security reasons but uh, um, I, I just raise the question whether, whether sometimes we can just employ a little bit of common sense and humbleness to to the situation now if you don't know the video that I was talking about the scene that I was talking about uh, of, of Zahid Hamid I believe we have the clip here, if we can just play that clip, if you've not seen it. So we can see uh, the free community support that is surrounded by a lot of people. You can see the gentleman in the tent shirt goes to the uh, hand. Uh, it looks like the gentleman was already waiting at the lift. But this is a good lift. Someone comes in and pulls that person out. Uh, yeah, you, you can see that happening right there. So, okay, at the end of the day, I'm going to play devil's advocate. There's a VIP getting into the lift. There are security concerns. Yeah, let's let's face it. Kadang-kadang kita tak nak sesiapa saja like masuk tanya, hey, bro, I mean, you know, there was no security check done. If I, let's just say lah, let's just say that gentleman in the check shirt turned out to be unfriendly or uh, an assassin uh, or you know whatever uh, then you would say that the bodyguard tak buat kerja dia right so i'm not i don't stand here and protect anyone and i don't stand here and attack anyone but i just want to be very clear that uh, no matter what it is uh, for for me there is very clear double standards that when it comes to malaysians uh, in certain standards uh, i personally don't understand why we automatically call people that I people automatically call me that for some reason. Uh, my answer to that is, uh, no, uh, but um, it seems a little bit weird that we place so much, uh, what's the word, so much respect and honor onto a title rather than the person themselves because i have met many many honorable people honorable people who have no titles who have no uh, jkn pp pdn kbdp and jmkpp whatever before their names that be uh, very respectful uh, honorable people who are really good people and i've met a lot of honorable people who have titles before their names so end of the day what i'm trying to say it's not about the title Okay, I don't even know why I'm starting to talk about this. I just guess I just wanted to get that off my chest. Anyway, just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who has been uh, watching the show. I see JD, you've been leaving a lot of comments. Uh, Guprit, Kanan, Eric, thank you so much for watching. Guys, if you are, uh, if you've enjoyed the show, leave a review. Tell me if you've enjoyed it. If you haven't enjoyed it, I get a lot of people telling me... Uh, Negative comments as well. Uh, Harith, you talk too much. Or Harith, you didn't prepare your questions. Or Harith, you should have asked this. Or Harith, you should have asked that. Oh, here's one, one thing I want to challenge. Uh, when someone says, oh, Harith, you didn't ask the hard question. Uh, guys, I'm not an investigative reporter. Saya bukan journalist. I'm just a guy with a camera and a, and a social media account. And I like to talk to people. And I like to find out different opinions. And I like to hear from people who are at places that I was not at and, and hear what happened there. So uh, really, I'm not really, I'm not a journalist of any sort. I have an opinion, that be, you know, not every opinion has to be shouted out loud. So thank you so much for watching. You can, you can, you, you, yes, you have to chabut the tansri or the title from all corrupter. Okay, Shan Sanishan. Okay, never mind about that. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Arata Skanda. Please, once again, also Twitter space, Trimakase. So many of you are watching, but nobody wanted to join in the conversation. Thing, everybody, all of you, much respect to you for, for, for being in, you know, listening in on Twitter space. I got to do this more often, guys. I am really beginning to enjoy Twitter, although you guys, memang.
Kadang-kadang Twitter tu macam Wow Cakap macam Wow Meletup ni Nak cakap sikit pun Kena Isteri saya pun Kenapa kau cakap macam tu You know sometimes you know, That's Twitter right Okay So my team are laughing Behind the camera Okay They, they need to stop me From tweeting some things Okay <laughs> Thank you so much. Terima kasih. Uh, thank you for sharing. If you've not shared on Facebook, please share it. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Subscribe. Oh, oh, my wife. Guys, for those of you who are still there, let me play you. My wife is going to hate me for this. Let me play you something very funny that happened last night. Okay. So my wife was, this is special. Tak ada kena mengena dengan rancangan ini ataupun topik ini. So, Early on in the day, my five-year, uh, six-year-old son Zidin told uh, his brother, I'm not stupid, I'm just lazy. He actually said this, umur dia enam. He declared, sebab dia tak buat kerja sekolah dia, I'm not stupid, I'm just lazy. So my wife was telling me that this is what my son said. And then my wife said, wanted to, she wanted to say, wow, he's got a very good vocabulary, right? He, that's what she wanted to say. That's not what she said. She 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 said this, and then I quickly took this out and recorded. So this this is, I made my wife repeat the word that she said. So remember, she wanted to say, vocabulary. This is what she said. Hold on, eh? What is what is it being tomorrow? Baby, it's not what? fair. It's, it's, it's two o'clock in the morning. So she didn't say something very <laughs> smart today. What did she said? Vocabulary. <laughs> no. So he's got more vocabulary. Vocabulary. <laughs> so he said, I'm not smart. I'm smart. No, he I'm... said that. I'm, do, do you know that I'm very smart, but I'm lazy? Okay, which means he has got more what? Vocabulary. <laughs> vocabulary. <laughs> Voca... Vocab. Vocabulary. <laughs> Vocabulary, okay? Vocabulary. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Uh, I'm dead. I'm dead. Uh, please do not tell my wife that you saw this at the end of the show because she never watches my show. She never watches and she'll never watch till the end. Unless one of you people tell her to go check out the end. So don't. <laughs> because um, my wife has very good vocabulary. <laughs> Vocabulary. <laughs> vocabulary. That's right, Laura. Cut. Laura Cutter. Vocul. Vocabulary. Perkataan baru yang akan dimasukkan ke dalam kamus bahasa Inggeris untuk Malaysia. Vocabulary. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Harith Iskandar. Thank you for watching. What's going on, Malaysia? Uh, listen. Leave a comment. Tell me who you want me, want me to speak to next. And don't don't ask me to go and speak to the uh, apa? director of the Jabatan Perhutanan Kelantan or whatever like that because that would be too easy. <laughs> too easy. Actually, no, I should speak to him. Yeah, you know what? I've had so much fun. Thank you so much, Amira, for, for being on the show. And thank you so much for, for watching. Uh, and you can be, be sure that if you watch what's, what's going on in Malaysia, not only do you learn English, but you also learn vocabulary. Good night.